This is the Redmi SmartBand Pro, the cheapest smartwatch I've reviewed in months. However, its performance might surprise you because as we've seen in our previous videos, the price of a smartwatch does not always reflect its quality. In this video, I'll scientifically test the SmartBand Pro from a health tracking perspective. And I have to say for the price, the watch might be a good choice for quite some people. I'll first show you the things it was good at, then I'll move on to the things that were mediocre and I'll close off with the things it did not do so well. For those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Rob and I'm a postdoctoral scientist specializing in biological data analysis. In this video, we'll test the heart rate monitoring, sleep tracking, oxygen saturation measurements and step counting of the Redmi SmartBand Pro. We'll also compare it to some of the other smartwatches I've tested in the past. First, let me share the most important background information on this watch. On the surface, there's a lot to like about it. The prices vary, but I bought it for an equivalent of about $50, which is surprisingly cheap. The display of the watch is quite quite beautiful and comes in at 1.47 inches. The watch has no physical buttons, but the touchscreen is really responsive and easy to use. Compared for instance to the original Mi Watch Lite, which had a similar looking menu, the touch capabilities of the Redmi SmartBand Pro are much improved. The SmartBand Pro is pretty light, weighing just 15 grams, and as is true for most modern smartwatches, it's waterproof up to five atmospheres. The watch has many of the features we've come to expect from SmartBands and smartwatches. It has 24 hour heart rate monitoring, it can measure your blood oxygen saturation or SpO2, and it tracks your sleep stages and sleep quality. The band also claims to monitor your stress levels. Now I won't test that feature in this video, but I personally have some doubts about its accuracy and usefulness. I couldn't find a real description of how this works, but on Reddit and Quora, people mentioned it was likely based on heart rate variability. Honestly, I can't say much more without proper testing and more information, but my gut feeling is that the technology and algorithms underlying this stress monitoring feature of the SmartBand Pro still need to be developed further. One other feature that could prove valuable for women is the female health tracking, where the band predicts and tracks the transitions of the female cycle stages, as Redmi calls it. Now, I should mention that the SmartBand Pro does not include a temperature sensor, which does likely limit the accuracy of such a feature. The app used for the SmartBand Pro is the Xiaomi Wear app on Android and the Xiaomi Wear Lite app on iPhone. The app is pretty basic but works fine for the most part. I honestly like the original Mi Fit app better and I don't really understand why they insist on filling half of your starting screen with some random avatar but it works fine. For a few months now the app also includes Strava integration and the app also connects to Apple Health. Especially the Strava integration is super helpful though I did notice that if I started a GPS exercise without taking my phone with me these activities would not be synced to Strava. So so be aware of that. However, on this channel, we like to put health features to the test. Let's start by looking at the features that perform best in my testing and close off with the things the SmartBand Pro did not do so well. And one simple thing the watch seemed to do particularly well is step counting. To test the step counting accuracy, I went out and took exactly 4,000 steps while wearing the SmartBand Pro. Now, since I do not like counting 4,000 steps in my head, I manually counted each step using this tally counter. I actually counted my steps in four segments of 1,000 steps, switching the tally counter between my left and right hand, which is what the left and right labels refer to here. And I wore the SmartBand Pro on my right arm. Now these numbers right here are the steps counted for each of the four segments by the SmartBand Pro. As you can see, the number of steps counted is super close to the actual 1000 steps I took. It was a maximum of only seven steps off, which means it's really amongst the best step counts I've tested so far. To put that into perspective, here are the steps counted by the Huawei Watch GT Runner and Huawei Watch GT3 I wore at the same time. As you can see, these watches are also pretty good at counting my steps, at least compared to some other devices, with the GT Runner counting a maximum of 30 steps too many and the GT3 counting maximally 27 too much. However, the SmartBand Pro does even better than these two devices. Now this shows us how good the watch is at counting steps when it is supposed to count steps. But does it count any steps when it's not supposed to count steps? With that I mean, does it count any steps when doing other activities that do not involve walking, like cycling indoors or outdoors or while typing on my computer? Well, it also appears to be pretty good on that front. As I'm writing the script for this video, I've been working on my computer for about six hours and I haven't really done much except for walk around my apartment. And so far today, the watch counted 381 steps, which is around what I would have expected. So that means it does not appear to count steps from the movements I made with my arms while I was typing. Also, looking at the steps counted over the last few days, I can see that whilst working out on my home trainer or when cycling outside, it did not count many steps, which is good. It actually counted zero steps while I was cycling on my home trainer and around 
around 178 around the period I was cycling outside, but this included walking from my apartment to my bike, which likely accounts for most of the steps. The step counting appears to be very good on the SmartBand Pro. So based on the data I've collected so far, I'd give the step counting of the SmartBand Pro five out of five stars. The next thing the watch was okay to mediocre at is heart rate tracking. I'll show you the results of the heart rate tracking test during spinning, cycling and weightlifting. To do that, I'll compare the heart rate measurements of the SmartBand Pro against the Polar H10 ECG chest strap, which can generally record my heart rate very accurately. We'll start by looking at the easiest type of exercise for a watch to track, cycling indoors. Now this involves very little movement or tension on my arms and will therefore produce less noise. Here we see an overview of that accuracy. Each dot here is a single heart rate measurement with along the horizontal axis the value according to the Polar H10 ECG chest strap and on the vertical axis the value according to the SmartBand Pro. The darker black the color, the more dots there are in a certain area. And as you can see, there's a pretty good agreement between the ECG chest strap and the SmartBand Pro, as most points are along the blue line. However, there's this weird group of points below the blue line right here. This indicates that while I actually had a high heart rate, the watch detected a too low heart rate. That is because for one out of the four indoor cycling sessions I tested it, it really struggled to keep track of my heart rate. Here I display that particular indoor cycling session. Along the horizontal axis we have the time and my heart rate is along the vertical axis. In blue I plot my heart rate according to the Polar H10 ECG chest strap and in red is my heart rate according to the SmartBand Pro. As you can see, especially during the second part of this training, it really detected a much too low heart rate. However, the other three indoor cycling sessions were much better, like this one right here, for instance. You can see that the red line and the blue line overlap almost perfectly, indicating that the SmartBand Pro detected about the same heart rate as the chest strap. We see mostly the same thing for this session right here. It sometimes has a small delay in picking up a decrease in my heart rate, as you can see right here and right here, but overall it's pretty good. And we see the same thing for this last training session right here, with a pretty good overlap between both devices. To me, it seems like the single training session the Redmi SmartBand Pro showed an issue might be due to a suboptimal position of the watch on my wrist. I generally take quite some care in wearing the watch tightly and high enough on the wrist, but it might just be that the SmartBand Pro is particularly sensitive to this. Still, for the price, I would say that this watch did pretty well during cycling indoors. However, let's now take the testing up a notch. It's much harder for watches to track my heart rate accurately while cycling outside, because while cycling outside there's much more movement and bumpiness, and also much more tension on my wrist, making it harder for the watch to detect my heart rate. If we look at the overview of that accuracy, we indeed see that there's a much larger deviation of the points away from the blue line, especially with many measurements ending up below the blue line. This indicates that the SmartBand Pro performed less well during cycling outside and tends to detect a too low heart rate. And that's also what we see looking at the individual rides. During this ride, for instance, we see that the watch quite often detected a too low heart rate and was not able to keep up with the increases in my heart rate. Some rides were a bit better, like this one right here, for instance. Though generally it does tend to miss a lot of the increases in my heart rate, like we can see during this ride right here. So when there's more movement and tension on my arms, the SmartBand Pro begins to struggle. What about during weightlifting, which is the most difficult for watches, given the very strong tension on my wrist and arms? Well, that is not something I would recommend you use the SmartBand Pro for. As you can see here, each time I do a set, my heart rate increases, but the SmartBand Pro is not able to detect this. Only in between sets, when there's no tension on my arms, is the watch able to track my heart rate. During this weightlifting session right here, it's even worse, with the watch not able to track my heart rate for the majority of the training session. So for stationary cardio exercises, the watch appears to do quite okay at heart rate tracking. However, as the movement and tension on my wrist begins to increase, the watch really struggles. So overall, I'd give the heart rate tracking of the SmartBand Pro 3 out of 5 stars. Now, let's move on to the next type of measurements the watch was okay at, SpO2 or oxygen saturation measurements. Whereas the heart rate is generally measured with green light, red and infrared light are used to measure oxygen saturation. Over the last weeks, I measured my oxygen saturation at ground level in the morning and evening using the SmartBand Pro. At the same time, I also recorded my oxygen saturation using a dedicated finger pulse oximeter. At ground level, my oxygen saturation should be within my normal range, which is generally between 97 and 100%, and should not fall below roughly 90 5%. Before moving to the results, if this video is proving interesting to you, a sub to the channel and a like or a comment on this video would be amazing. Now back to the results.
on the left here are 39 measurements taken with the SmartBand Pro and on the right matching measurements taken with the finger pulse oximeter. As you can see, the SmartBand Pro is within a normal range of SpO2 values about 90% of the time, I would say. However, there are a few low measurements and in general, it does tend to detect relatively low values compared to the finger pulse oximeter. Still, as I said, most values are within that normal range that you would expect at ground level. To be sure of the SpO2 accuracy of the SmartBand Pro, I'd have to test the oxygen saturation in a low oxygen environment at some point. Still, as far as I can judge, the SpO2 measurements taken by the SmartBand Pro are mostly in a realistic range most of the time, though on the low end. So I'd give the SpO2 measurements 3 out of 5 stars. Next, let's take a look at the thing I found the SmartBand Pro to be worst at, sleep stage tracking. Now that's not to say that the sleep tracking of the SmartBand Pro is not useful at all. It does have its uses, but I'll get to that later. To check if the SmartBand Pro can detect my sleep stages, I'll compare it to an EEG device called the Dream 2 headband that can actually measure my brain waves and has been shown to be relatively reliable at sleep stage tracking. Here I show an overview of those sleep test results. For getting an overall impression of how well the SmartBand Pro performs, the Dream 2 headband should likely be good enough. However, the gold standard would be polysomnography, which I would also like to try on the SmartBand Pro in the future. Now on top are the sleep stages as recorded by the EEG device and on the left are the sleep stages as recorded by the SmartBand Pro. I wore both the EEG device and the SmartBand Pro to bed for 10 nights and I will see how close the predictions of the SmartBand Pro are to those of the EEG device. Now each column here sums to 100%, meaning that we can see what percentage of each of the sleep stages according to the Dream 2 was predicted as each sleep stage by the SmartBand Pro. If they perfectly agree, all values along the diagonal should be 100%. First of all, we see that 85% of what was deep sleep according to the EEG device was also recorded as deep sleep by the SmartBand Pro, which is pretty good. If it did occasionally disagree, this was mostly with the SmartBand Pro predicting it as light sleep at about 9%, but also as REM sleep for about 7% of the deep sleep according to the EEG device. For this example night right here, we see that all of the deep sleep the EEG device detected was also marked as deep sleep by the SmartBand Pro. Now just to explain what you see here, on top we have the sleep stage according to the Dream 2 EEG headband with the clock time along the horizontal axis and the sleep stages on the vertical axis. On the bottom we have a similar plot but now for the SmartBand Pro. I've highlighted all the EEG recorded deep sleep in purple here and again as you can see the SmartBand Pro detected all of the deep sleep that the EEG device detected but it also detected quite a bit of extra deep sleep throughout the night. And we see the same thing for this second example night right here where basically all of the deep sleep I had was detected but a lot of extra deep sleep was also detected. When it comes to light sleep detection, this seems to be okay-ish. Light sleep agreed with the EEG device at only about 50%. If they did disagree, this is mostly with the SmartBand Pro predicting it as deep sleep. Now REM sleep agreed really poorly between the EEG device and the SmartBand Pro. Only 20% of what the EEG device marked as REM sleep was also marked as REM sleep by the SmartBand Pro. A larger percentage of what was REM sleep according to the EEG device was actually classified as light sleep by the SmartBand Pro at over 70%. The worst example night of REM sleep detection by the SmartBand Pro is this night right here where it did not detect any REM sleep at all. So here in red I marked the REM sleep according to the Dream 2 EEG headband and as you can see the SmartBand Pro detected no REM sleep at all except for this tiny sliver right here. Now some nights are a bit better, like this one right here, where it at least detected some of the REM sleep, though the overlap with the EEG device is still not that great. You can see there's some overlap, like right here, here, here and here, but it misses a lot of the REM sleep and it also predicts it in different moments. Now you go through roughly 4 to 6 sleep cycles each night, each one starting with light sleep and deep sleep, which is marked here in blue, and each one ending in REM sleep, marked here in red. As you can see, based on the data from the EEG device, I likely had 4 complete sleep cycles this night. However, because the REM sleep detection by the SmartBand Pro does not seem great, I would judge that we cannot see the sleep cycles based on just the data from the SmartBand Pro. Now, awake detection showed a mediocre agreement with the EEG device at about 63%. If the SmartBand Pro did classify awake time as something else than the EEG device, this was mostly as light sleep. Now, this makes complete sense as light sleep is the closest sleep stage to being awake. As you can see here in green, some of the awakenings according to the EEG device were also detected as awakenings by the SmartBand Pro, though it does not agree all of the time and it also detected some extra awake moments. We mostly see something similar for this night right here, with the SmartBand Pro detecting quite a few extra awakenings. 
So this indicates that the SmartBand Pro is likely not the best smartwatch when it comes to sleep stage tracking. However, it is important to put these results into perspective by comparing them to other watches. This graph shows an overview of the agreement of different watches with the EEG device. Along the horizontal axis we have the average agreement over the four individual sleep stages and on the vertical axis we have the agreement of the worst sleep stage. The better the agreement the more to the top right the device is. And as you can see the best agreeing devices with the EEG device include different Fitbits, in this case the Fitbit Sense, Inspire 2 and Charge 5, the Whoopstrap 3.0, 4.0 and the Withing Sleep Analyzer. If we now plot the SmartBand Pro in the same plot, we see that it is mediocre at best when it comes to the overall sleep stage tracking, with an average agreement over the four sleep stages of about 54%. And as we saw before, because of the bad RAM sleep agreement, it's particularly low on the vertical axis as well. However, one thing should not be overlooked. As I mentioned before, I do think there's one good use for the sleep tracking of the SmartBand Pro, namely tracking your total time spent in bed each night and also tracking when you fell asleep and when you woke up. For many people, this can already be very helpful by keeping themselves accountable for getting enough sleep and sticking to a consistent sleep schedule. And tracking when you fall asleep and when you wake up is something that the SmartBand Pro is quite good at. Along the vertical axis here we have the dates of the nights I tested the SmartBand Pro and on the horizontal axis is the time difference between the SmartBand Pro and the EEG device for waking up in yellow dots and falling asleep in blue dots. So a positive number means that the SmartBand Pro detected me as waking up or falling asleep later than the EEG device and a negative number detected me as waking up or falling asleep earlier. As you can see, over these nights, the SmartBand Pro agreed pretty well with the EEG device. Just for one of the nights, it struggled quite a bit, where it detected me as waking up too early and falling asleep too late. However, for the other nights, it's never more than 12 minutes off, and mostly it agrees very well with the EEG device, generally sticking within about 5 minutes of the EEG device's predictions. Now based on these results, I would say that the sleep stage tracking of the SmartBand Pro is not very good. The main thing I would use it for is tracking my total time in bed, since it does seem to be quite okay at detecting the moment you fall asleep and the moment you wake up. Therefore, overall, I'd give the sleep tracking of the SmartBand Pro 2 out of 5 stars. However, I do think we have to take the price point of the Redmi SmartBand Pro into consideration when judging it. If it had cost the same as a high-end watch from Garmin, Polar or Apple for instance, I would not have been super positive about it. However, for about $50 you get a SmartBand that functions pretty well as a basic smartwatch. It has a pretty good touchscreen with good step counting and what appears to be pretty okay oxygen saturation measurements. The heart rate tracking is not great, but probably good enough for some basic activities like cycling indoor. The sleep tracking is also only good enough for detecting when you fall asleep and when you wake up and it's not good enough to detect your actual sleep stages. All of that being said, for $50 that might actually be a good deal for people that only need and want the basics. At only a fifth or tenth of the price of many other smartwatches, it could be an amazing deal if this is all that you need. In the end, it really boils down to what you want to use it for and of course to be aware of its limitations. Overall, I'd give this watch 3 out of 5 stars, but taking into account the price, I'd bump it up by half a star to 3.5 stars out of 5. As mentioned before, the heart rate tracking of the Redmi SmartBand Pro is only good enough for some basic tracking. If you care about heart rate tracking during exercise, I'm currently testing the Huawei Watch GT Runner, which is very similar to the Huawei Watch GT3, which has amazing heart rate tracking. Check out that video right here. The Apple Watch is still the undefeated heart rate king. If you want to see more, you can see videos on the Apple Watch right here. I'll also link the recent reviews I did on many Garmin watches right here. Now I hope this video informed you about the strengths and limitations of the Redmi SmartBand Pro. Thank you for watching and catch you in the next video.